the most important courses were probably the ones taught by Gibbs because he focused on management and business and administration and all of our reports, our book reports, all of our studies had to be to analyze problems, to narrow the scope, and to be precise in your statements as to what the problems were, how to solve them. Um, I reflected back as I went on when I was working in the early part of the 60s at Hutzel Hospital and teaching management courses at Wayne State University, how much I really learned when I reviewed the material that I had from Gibbs. But really that thought really trained me how to sort out what was important and what is not important and to really understand what management is all about because it is not a science. I think there were several parts of the program that were very unique and successful. First, it was a combination of Gibbs and Ginzik. Uh, two different personalities, two different people, but they complemented each other and really were the nucleus of the program. The privilege of being a member of the first class, where there were only 26 of us, uh, we spent a lot of time together either uh, studying, preparing reports, or in classes, or touring all of the hospitals in the Washington, Baltimore area, and we became very close-knit as a class. Although we weren't close in age, I was 24 when I was there, and the oldest in the class was probably 60. And the average age, we figured, was somewhere between 35 and 36. The other aspect of the program, and the key to making it successful, was the structure of the administrative residency. You know, you can learn about a hospital department or functions or organization while you're at the university, but the year you spend in a hospital as a student because that's the way I treated all my residents as students. You really learn to deal with people and learn the operation of a hospital. And if you think about it today, if we want to reflect, in 1960, a hospital was equivalent to a Model A Ford. It probably had a transmission, uh, a clutch, and a, a an engine uh, that had maybe four cylinders, and it was so basic in design, there was not much to it, as opposed to getting into your 2011 Lexus or Cadillac SRX or something, and try to imagine all the complexities in that car with the cube computerized systems, every possible exter that a car has. Well, this is how the hospitals evolve from that basic car to a very complex, well, the car is a, is a um, me mechanism, but the hospital is an organization. It's, a, it, it's just a very complex, a very diverse, very complicated organization today. Because we were located in Washington, D.C., and there was nothing that wasn't mandatory when I went to school. I know now students can do anything and they want and go anywhere they want. But at that time, we had to wear a jacket, a tie, a suit and tie to every class. And Saturday morning, we had what Gibbs called our... Uh, I think they were a series of lectures. We had guest speakers. And every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 and 10 to 12, we had individuals coming to speak to the class. They'd speak for an hour and answer questions for an hour. And again, we were there, not in casual clothes, all dressed up. Of course, at that time, we could also smoke in a class. I think that would blow everybody's mind t t today. But um, 
and so many people were in Washington because they were there for um, hospital business of some kind or the other. So we had the opportunity to be exposed to people who ran the Joint Commission, the American Hospital Association, uh, politicians, big time hospital administrators at the time. It was really a wonderful and unique experience. The advice I could give to incoming people is that um, everybody, you always, I always say when I take over an organization, I'm not looking past, I'm only looking forward. But if you don't understand the history, you will, you will repeat the mistakes in the future. And so you need to understand how the health now today, the system got to be where it is or, or how it is. Just don't think that you're the brightest star on the block or bulb in the lamp that's come onto the scene and going to solve all the problems. Try to go back and understand how health care, how hospitals developed, especially in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s. Because like I say, it was, they were totally simple operations run by doctors early on to very complicated, diverse organizations today. And just because you read about case studies in class, just don't think you know it all when you go there. You really have to think of how did it get here? How, what can I do to help improve it? And what can I do to make health care better in the future, especially with all the proposed legislation, whether whatever it's going to be and however it comes out, it's going to be challenging. I would say don't forget when I went to the program in 1960, Medicare and Medicaid hadn't even been considered. And so you could see what you've got to look forward to in the future. I always thought of myself as one of the people working in the hospital. I treated them and I created a family culture. And I heard that from the doctors, from the employees, from the trustees. And I had an office. Most people build offices furthest from the front door. I built my office right off the front door. So every time people walk from the parking deck into the hospital, they looked into my office. They knew I was there. Anybody that wanted to see me, I saw them. I didn't, I, I had appointments, but people, uh, especially the medical staff, felt free to come in any time. And even if I was busy in, the, uh, in a meeting and someone said, Dr. Smith wants to see you, I'd just say, excuse me for a minute. I walked to the door, I'd go out, and I'd say, Julian, I'm, I'm, I'm tied up in a meeting right now. Is there something I can do? Or can we get together in 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes? And that would satisfy them. And they would come back. And every one of them praised me of saying that I had the open door policy, even the employees. I always told our, my residents that part of what you get from the program, you have to get back from the, give back to the program. And that's why I continue to always spend time with uh, taking residents and, and spending a quality time with them. And uh, I, I, I just, uh, I, I have to say I've been fortunate, I've been honored. I've been honored by Wayne State University School of Medicine. I have an, I'm the first lay administrator in the country to have an endowed shared. Uh, I, uh, I have an endowed shared for OBGYN, the eighth endowed chair in the School of Medicine at Wayne State University. I've been honored by George Washington University as a preceptor of the year award, the first one that they were given by the Gibbs Award that they gave back several years ago. Um, I know I was a first in the uh, a healthcare person to be on the Greater Detroit Area Chamber of Commerce Board here, and I served eight year term there. Um, I just been fortunate to be visible in healthcare 
accessible to people who had concerns about health care and a conduit to many times get them into our health care system. So um, I, I, many people, uh, doctors and the employees, always come and say they enjoyed being uh, at the hospital and grateful uh, the way it was run and the opportunity they had. And so I feel uh, whatever I did, I did it to the best of my ability. And uh, what I aspired to be and was not comforts me. I, I just want to be remembered as somebody who tried to do the best, best they could for the university and representing it and having the opportunity to work in a field that really developed and uh, uh, over the uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s and be being part of it and part of uh, promoting the program and the people from the program. So I I just uh, was happy to be one of the people and happy to still be here and I'll be happier yet if I'm there in November of 2012 to celebrate the Black Tie Party.